There are different types of women in every culture. They have various characteristics and personalities and different mindsets and perceptions about life, love, men, society, family, and what they want to do in the future. However, in all of this, there's a common type of woman in across cultures, across continents, and across societies who really gets the first prize for being the biggest disappointment for all men and for the all the good women out there. She is the entitled woman. Entitled women are as the name suggests incredibly entitled. They believe the world owes them everything. Their level of narcissism is beyond extraordinary. Their belief in being entitled is such that it really takes them decades and decades of experiences to realize that the world owes them nothing. That their families owe them nothing. Their boyfriends, lovers, husbands, and partners owe them nothing. No one is obliged to give to her what she wants of them just because she is beautiful or just because she is confidently assertive about her entitlement. All in all, entitled women think they're the top prize. Anything one is considered a prize. It's something that possesses worth and value. Something to which no one has access to or is not easily available. It's something that is uncommon. And the value it has is not based on beauty or appeal or attractiveness. Because beauty is abundant. Just walk down the street whenever you decide to next and notice how beautiful some women are. Men want to see gorgeous women. That's not unusual because they're not hiding this. They say they want to see beauty, and that's what they tend to do. On the other hand, women say they value and want relationships, but they won't put in the effort to turn those relationships into a reality. They need to contribute more than just their physical attractiveness if they want to be with good men and have wonderful relationships. Even when you do incredibly kind things for a woman, such as pay for her supper, she may not even notice or remember you. She does this because she feels entitled to it. When someone feels entitled to something, they won't be grateful for it or say thank you. In other words, all of your efforts are in vain. Women don't give a damn about how hard you work and the struggles you go through in daily life. They are just concerned with how you make them feel and what you can provide for them. Women are drawn to men who make them feel wonderful. You will receive all the attention you want from her when you're providing her with the luxuries of life. But as soon as you begin to struggle, as soon as times are difficult, as soon as you are unable to provide her the positive emotions she is accustomed to, she will leave, replace you, and find someone else. Always keep in mind that women don't care about your difficulties. They linger around the winning post identifying and pursuing the winners. If you want to find a nice woman, she must support you through your hardships, whether or not she feels good about herself. This exemplifies genuine loyalty. So be wise in deciding the type of woman you want to be with. It can literally make or break you. Let's say that you are a financially successful man who understands how men have the power to enrich women's lives and raise their status in society. It's incredibly selfless and admirable if you use your resources to provide for women and to improve her quality of life. You are selfless, but to a certain extent, you're also naive. Let me tell you how. When you make women equal to men, when you give them everything you have, and when you do that even if she feels entitled to your resources just because she's in a relationship with you, then soon enough, they'll stop respecting you. The state used to encourage sacrifice by promising that if a woman went off with another guy, she would lose her money and rewards in favor of a new man. The women got to keep the house, the kids, and a portion of his money to essentially sustain them if men started cheating and breaking their marriage vows. We truly had that true equality up to the 60s or maybe 70s. Back then, being a male in terms of being a provider and a protector of women and children was not heroic or something to be talked about. It was just how things were. It was all part of life. The question is, why should men even bother being in relationships with women since most of them are incredibly entitled and feel that men's lives should revolve around theirs? Men often gain intimacy, affection, and reproduction from the majority of contemporary relationships. Intimacy between the man and woman lasts only a couple of years. And the future holds children who may be taken away at any time, and the flame of love that cannot be rekindled. 
When a guy swallows the red pill and realizes that everything he gains from a woman may be taken away from him at any point by force, he will no longer be as willing to enter a relationship. However, he is now empowered and knowledgeable, much like the lady with the university degree. Because he is aware of his own strength and value, he is once more on par with women. Women must have experienced both the best and worst of times during the past 40 years. They had complete freedom to do anything they pleased, but even when they managed to get males as protectors and providers, their lives were terrible. It appears that women have lost sight of their genuine calling since society has persuaded them they must go work for men to support themselves. Men, on the other hand, have stayed true to their goals up to this point. However, they are now beginning to wonder why even bother with women. Men are becoming more conscious on their own, and owing to social media, we are also subconsciously learning more about women. I was sometimes afraid to get married and commit financially to my partners even when I was in long-term relationships because I felt that I had something to lose. I had more money in one or two businesses, and I was concerned about losing what I had previously accomplished. Maybe I would have felt differently if I had been constructing a financial future with my spouse, beginning from scratch with both of us, and putting equal effort into our work or enterprises. But I was wary because I realized that despite my increased efforts, I was gradually ceding control of the relationship's monetary and lifestyle decisions to my partner. Because I was stewing in my own juices, I started to dislike my partners. Why should I put in more effort when they get to decide how we will spend our lives? All of our leisure time, activities, and our social interactions were largely within their control. Why would I genuinely assume much more responsibility when I just have a small amount of power? In the beginning of relationships, the woman frequently wants you to take charge, act like a man, and show her that you can guide and lead her. Once she's basically had it with seeing you do that, she ultimately reclaims control from you. Most guys don't care because they're stupid and in love, but even at the age of 25, I could sense that something wasn't right. I couldn't understand why my partner, who had greatly benefited from all of my decisions up until the last three or four years of our relationship, would suddenly change into a different person and start demanding certain things. I understand that there is no use in bothering with a lady who simply cares about herself without taking my sentiments into account. I can't begin to describe how it feels to love someone for five years, then another person for ten, only to find out later that they don't love you in the same manner, if at all. And when you finally realize that you have been suspecting it, a he is destroyed. If only someone had told me that when I was a teenager, I may have realized what the heck was going on and that it wasn't really about me after all. Because people perceive them as the prize, the media and our loved ones will never confess they were. It's all about them in life. That is the taboo subject that no one wants to discuss. Why even bother with girls when they're so entitled and have nothing to offer in return except beauty and body? Men want women because the brain releases endorphins after intimacy to make you feel elated. Men want women because they believe they can help them relieve their agony, much like a medicine does. Temporarily, all of those things make a guy happier. Over time, it is possible that this leads to his ruin. Seed is a female-specific antidepressant. There is undoubtedly a connection between condoms and the fact that women are sadder than ever. Men are declining vasectomies because women become depressed any time they don't have the seed inside of them. According to studies, women who break up with a man but who were full of good seed and didn't actually use condoms would experience the rebound effect in the relationship and would be more likely to take the man back or go back to him because of the withdrawal effects of not getting their daily dose. I read a piece that discussed what makes intimacy the most potent substance on earth. It discusses 12 various aspects of your physical and emotional health that are improved when you are genuinely experiencing physical intimacy. This covers all aspects, including skin quality and heart health. There is also speculation that having 100 or more frequent orgasms a year or more extends a person's life by 3 to 8 years. So, more and more men now feel that being with women is a waste of time, and part of the reason for that is how deluded women can be and how entitled they are when it comes to their belief that a man should just share everything with them just because they are beautiful women. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.